Hi guys, it's Mike at youarethepath.com. Today I wanted to talk about reminiscing, when you reminisce about something that happened maybe a moment ago, yesterday, a week ago, and in particular, when you're reminiscing about someone, <laughs> when you're rem reminiscing about you know, someone that you really like in a romantic way. You may have shared a moment with them that was real sweet and you keep going back to it in your mind, back to that moment that you shared with them. Now, that's okay. You know, it's okay to recreate that in your mind for a moment but you don't want to dwell there and there's a danger in doing that and that's what I wanted to speak about on this video and I'm gonna read for you a section of this book How to Know God by Deepak Chopra and I'm going to read for you um, a little story about a young man that is on a retreat and he has this vision of this peaceful monk and um, he's unsure whether this vision is real or not so I'm just gonna go ahead and read this first of all this vision means everything to me the young man began but I'm not the kind of person who needs symbols and images to worship I reject religion, only Buddhism ever interested me because of its purity, but even there I didn't find enough to make me want to follow it. I understand, Krishnamurti said. So what is your question? I want to know if this figure is real or just a figment of my mind. I have to know the truth. You said it has brought you a great deal of meaning. The young man grew enthusiastic. I have undergone a profound transformation. I feel joyful and at peace. Is the monk with you now? Krishnamurti asked. The young man nodded, but hesitantly. The monk is starting to fade. He is not so vivid as at first. Are you afraid of losing him? Anxiety showed in the young man's face. What do you mean? I have come here to know the truth. But I don't want you to take him away. Don't you realise how this vision has consumed me? In order to have peace and joy, I think about this vision and they come to me. Krishnamurti replied, Living in the past, however pleasant and uplifting, prevents the experience of what is. The mind finds it difficult not to live in a thousand yesterdays. Take this figure you cherish. The memory of it inspires you, delights you, and gives you a sense of release. But it is only the dead inspiring the living. The young man looked crestfallen and glum. So it wasn't real after all. The mind is complicated, said Krishnamurti. It gets conditioned by the past and by how it would like things to be. Does it really matter if this figure is real or projected? No, the young man admitted. It only matters that it has shown me so much. Has it? It didn't reveal to you the working of your own mind, and you became a prisoner of your experience. If I may say so, this vision brought fear into your life because you, have, you were afraid to lose it. Greed also came in because you wanted to hoard the experience. Thus, you lost the one thing this vision might have brought you, self-knowledge. Without that, every experience is an illusion. Every divine image remains an image. Every vision tempts us to hold on to it. To be really free, there is no option except to be yourself. You are the living centre around which every event happens, yet no event is so important that you willingly give yourself up to it. 
By being yourself, you open the door to what is the never-ending play of cosmic intelligence, curving back to know itself again and again. In this way, life remains fresh and fulfills its need to renew itself at every moment. So he became a prisoner of the vision that he was having to the point where he was fearful of losing it. Now, if you've been getting to know someone that you really like, you may be dating them, and you're constantly thinking about them, it creates expectation as well because the people in your life are mirrors. They're mirroring back to you what you are and we're attracted most to people that mirror back to us our highest values and the things that we love about ourselves. It's okay to be inspired by somebody. You may contemplate them for a moment and be inspired, but you don't want to dwell to the point where you create this image of them and you, you place it up here and that to the point where it's almost as though um, this vision is responsible for the good feeling that you have. And that's where the term placing them on a pedestal comes from because that good feeling was within you. You know, they've come into your life to give you a richer experience of yourself and to give you self-knowledge. And in the story, um, it's said that you are the living center around which every event happens. You know, don't, never forget yourself. If you've met someone and they inspire you, take action on that inspiration. Because if you're holding up this image of them and you're not continuing to live to your highest values, you're going to create expectation. This other person isn't responsible for making you feel good about yourself. This other person isn't responsible for your happiness. You're responsible for that. So if you're not living to your highest values and you're interacting with this person again, you're going to be frustrated at yourself. You're frustrated at yourself because you're not doing the things that you need to do in your life. And you're going to project it onto the other person and find fault in the other person. And you're going to think that it's them that is irritating you, but it's not. It's you irritated with yourself. You've lost the present moment because you're not appreciating them as they are because you're expecting this image that you have of them and because you're not getting that hit, that emotional hit from them it's causing a frustration which is actually a frustration with yourself you're projecting it on them you're going to blame the relationship and say well you know that person is no good so this is the danger of placing people on a pedestal and trying to get some kind of emotional hit. Now, we usually seek an emotional hit because there's nothing happening in the present moment. So if there's not much going on in your life, you're not excited about your life, there is a tendency to dwell on the past and you know how great things were yesterday or last week. So Remain in the present moment. The present moment is rich and that's where self-discovery can be revealed.